Before I begin this video, I would like to ask Nintendo to not take down this video just because I'm talking about one of the games on their console. Thanks. My name is Dan and today I will give you 5 reasons why Fire Emblem Free Houses is the perfect game for yet another year of COVID-19 lockdowns. Number 1. The Law while this game's anime appeal might be a deal breaker for some audiences, Fire Emblem's depth of lore should not be taken lightly by the players. The plot tells a story of four different factions and their struggles to one-up each other. The first faction in the land of Fodland, which is the world in which the game takes place, is the Empire. The Empire, located on the western side of the map, used to rule the most land in Fodland since ancient times until rebellion took place. This led to a birth of the second faction, the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Fargus? Regardless, it's the faction in the north. Instead of being ruled by the Empire, the kingdom is a sovereign nation. The third nation, the Leicester Alliance, is the most democratic of the three factions. A council of nobles rules the eastern part of Hodlan, rather than having a figurehead like the kingdom or the Empire. The player takes on the role of Byleth, a teacher in the officer's academy of Garrick Mark Monastery. The monastery is the home of the fourth faction, the Church of Seiros. The mostly neutral group of zealots do their own thing unless one of the other regions decides to act against them. In which case you will see the Knights of Sayra swoop down on you with the magical weapons and the big heroes that they have in the church. Hell have no fury like a scorned god. This faction is led by Archbishop Rhea. All three other factions have their own representing house in the academy, the Empire Black Eagles, Blue Lions from Fargus and the Golden Deer from Leicester. As the teacher you decide which faction to educate in the art of war and love for the goddess. Depending on which house the player picks, more subplots are unlocked as each of the students has their own stories and arcs. All of these houses are led by key figures in each of the regions as each one of these three leaders will be the next ruler of their regions. So you have the next Empress, you have the next King of Fargus and you have the next um, main noble in the Alliance. And oh boy, you just know that all these nobles have their own little dramas to bring to the table. And if you expect them to act like little babies out of the pram, whenever shit doesn't go their way, well, they fucking do. So this adds more drama. The game has other smaller factions trying to cause fuss through many unpleasantries, but I won't spoil anything in this video. Number 2, Social Sim. Like several other great RPGs of the Japanese type, Fire Emblem Free Houses has social sim sequences outside of battles. The game allows the player to explore the academy, to interact with various activities such as fishing and gardening. Things like gardening or fishing give Byleth more items to either gift away to the students to make better friendships, or to cook with the students, therefore boosting the friendships further and also giving boost to your troops before the next battle. Byleth will find the students scattered around the monastery, tending to their own business. They will often have new topics to discuss, depending on the story's events, or more personal issues and questions. Byleth can find several lost items, which belong to one of the students. The player can return them to the rightful owners for relationship boosts. Better relationships will make the units stronger in battles or even allow Byleth to recruit students from other houses. And this is worth doing because many of the characters are interesting due to their own backing stories and views. So if you are into the lore and personal growth stories, these are worth keeping in mind. So while so many of us are stuck at home not being able to see our friends and family, Fire Emblem might be able to scratch this need for social interaction and while it's not the perfect solution, it might help a little bit. Or rather, not help, but distract for a while. Number 3. Stats Management Fire Emblem is a stat-based RPG, which means that there are many numbers and skills to manage in various ways. As a teacher, you will be in charge of delivering classes to your students. If you want one of your students to learn how to be better at healing, for example, you will pick that student's goal to target the skill that will unlock more healing spells. And if you want another student to be an axe-wielding tank, you will select the heavy armor and axe skills as the targets to master. The lectures can be confusing in the first few hours due to the number of students and their options. Still, once it clicks, it becomes relatively easy to manage. Every character's starting class is automatically allocated based on the background. Those nobles will be classed as nobles and so on. The differences between nobles and commoners are minimal and that's if there are any that will actually make any impact on the game. Alongside earning experience points to level up, the students master the classes during combat. Each action adds an extra class point to the mastery meters and once the meter is full, the character will master the class. When this happens, the character is then rewarded by the game with a permanent stat boost based on the class that you just mastered. So for example, if the character is a fighter, the strength will increase. And in other cases, you can also unlock new abilities. Once the character is of high enough level, and is proficient enough in a given speciality, the student can then attempt to pass an exam. 
If successful, the student will unlock a more advanced class, with more significant stat boosts and new mastery to learn. Think of this as natural progression from a squire to a knight and then to a warlord. Every new class unlocks a new armor set. So it is quite satisfying to see somebody go from this sort of shitty armor set to a fully blown wearable fucking tank. In addition to this, you can also equip each of your units with new gear. In this regard, synergy is the key in this game. Just remember that the class, education goals, and gear should always complement each other for best results. For example, you would not give a sword to an archer, unless you really want to see them stab somebody every now and then. It won't do much, but eh, might be fun. The mixture of all these different mechanics and managing stats is a well-designed force behind goal-oriented gameplay style. It is a good driving force between pushing the player to play the game a bit more, and also to make the game very addictive. It is just so rewarding to see one of the students become this massive badass of your design. Number 4. The Battle System While the battle system in Fire Emblem Three Houses might seem simplistic and not demanding too much from the player, it is anything but that. Setting the game to hard difficulty and switching on the permadeath mode was a positive game changer. The combat instantly made me think about my equipment and healing far more often, as there was now gravity to my every move. I now had to pre-plan all of my moves, as I would during a game of chess, to ensure that I won't be punished for my lack of attention. The battles are split into turns, one for the player, one for the enemy, and one for allies in some cases. This order repeats until the battle is over. Each unit has a go during the turn. Depending on the character's loadout, their attacks will have a different range. Fighters can only use melee weapons if an enemy is standing right next to the unit. Archers will be able to shoot targets from a distance, and the spellcasters can attack or heal anyone within the range of the spells. As the units learn to use the weapons better, very special attacks called combat arts will be available to use. These either deal extra damage against certain types of enemies, or add more range to their attacks. Some maps have unique tiles and forests on the grid that add boost to defense or strength. Additionally, units that develop good relationships will have additional boosts if they stand next to the friends on the grid. Keep that in mind and you'll see their actions become more effective. The maps vary between forests, mountains, catacombs, towns and castles depending on the quest context. On top of that, some battles have unique settings. One battlefield early on in the game is hidden behind a fog, making enemies invisible until they are too close. Not being careful in this battle can lead to many mistakes. The students are very likely to run into an enemy without having a clue about it, as the opponent will not reveal itself until our troop ends its turn. Luckily, the main character can manipulate time. Thus, the player can rewind time and avoid making some mistakes. The battle system borrows from the Rock, Paper, Scissors rule set, where one class is more effective against the other class. For example, Warlocks are effective against tanks, and Brawlers are effective against Warlocks. In effect, this battle system is easy to understand, but can be difficult to master. As cheesy as that sounds. Number 5. The Atmosphere of the Game This entry is a bit of a cheat, because this is just a recap of all the things that I've said so far, but I think it is very important to conclude it like this. Fire Emblem Three Houses has the most welcoming atmosphere in video games that I've experienced in a long, long time. With the lore being so deep, if you will commit some of the time to actually learn the history of Hodland and, and all the different aspects of it, it can suck you in and never let go. And while it isn't at the level of, you know, Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, I think there is enough detail and political conflicts and wars that the story itself is very engaging. On top of that, there are dozens of characters in this game with interesting backstories and their own takes on the events within the game. And after Byleth and the player will get to know these students, I promise you that going back to the monastery and, you know, just to chat shit with them, will become oddly very comforting. The battle system and RPG elements in the game always provide just enough sense of accomplishment to keep the players coming back for more. But one of the most important aspects of the game is its main hub area, the, the monastery itself. While so many games have these areas within them designated to make the player feel at home while he's there, or she's there, the monastery of Garrick Mac is probably the most honest hub area in all of these games. Coming back to it time after time after each battle, it just makes it just, it, it, once it clicks in your brain, that, that, that place, it's very hard to let it go. It, it does feel very, very welcoming to be back in those halls again. And it is for these reasons that Free Houses has become one of my favorite, if not the most favorite game on Nintendo Switch ever. And this is competing with games like Breath of the Wild and obviously 
you know, Mario. And as cheesy as this sounds now, I think that in the current COVID climate, where so many of us are stuck at home, you know, not being able to see our friends and family, just kind of, you know, trying to find something to do, I think this game just ticks so many things on the list of, you know, things that to occupy your, your brain with during this time, that it's just so hard not to recommend this game to everyone who might be at least interested in anything RPG related or anything social sim related. Fire Emblem has so many of these things in it and it just makes it all click together in such a perfect way. I'm not saying that it will solve all the issues and you know fix whatever problems there might be in your life at the moment and replace obviously you know your real friends and your real family but the game is so good that I genuinely do think it will be able to distract a lot of people from the everyday shit that's going on at the moment. Just like it's done to me, to be fair. So saying that, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, it took me forever to make for some reason. Uh, I mean, mostly because I was playing Fire Emblem in most of my free time. So this is the reason why I've been kind of... I've not uploaded for like a month. So yeah.